3.9 to 3.10 dividing fractions. I can divide fractions. Can you all divide fractions? Yes. Awesome. Uh, what does invert mean? What does invert or inverse mean, Rowan? Uh, switch around. Switch around. Upside down, right? Flip. Opposite. Reciprocal. Same thing, right? Yeah. Okay, so when we're talking about inverse operations and we're talking about reciprocals, mostly what we're referring to is if you take this fraction one half, what is the inverse of one half, everybody? Two over one. Two over one. What is the reciprocal of one half, everybody? Two over one. Two over one. Awesome. Okay. Uh, number two, remember me. Everyone on the count of three, let's say um, the way to remember what to do when dividing fractions. One, two, three. When dividing fractions, multiply, flip the second, multiply. So this is your process right here. We didn't even get the answer. We just showed you that if you have two-thirds dividing by one-half, it's two-thirds times two over one. Because, we're getting to this in a second, we're trying to figure out how many one-halves go into, how many one-halves go into two-thirds, right? Cool. And then when you are dividing fractions, do you ever truly do division? No. You never do division. So when you're dividing fractions, if you ever divide, you're doing something wrong. Five is an example. Remember. Improper fractions must always be written as? Um, okay, number six, another example. I love it. I think Toby told us this one. When he um, realized it was a division problem, he wanted to rewrite it so that the one half became the reciprocal, which is two over one. But notice what he did down here. What did he add? A one. A one is a denominator, right? It just helps keep things straight or keep things organized in your head. Um, and then number six, we just talked about this. How many one halves? How many one halves go into six? Twelve. Twelve. Twelve, and we counted them, right? This is one half. This is another one half. So that's our second one. Our third one half. Our fourth one half, and so on. And we counted twelve one halves that went into six. Yes, no? Yes. Sliding on down, number seven is just another example. Sliding on down, number eight. Um, now on number eight, it's a mixed number. You must never ever do math with mixed numbers, right? Yes. So we're going to take that mixed number, we're going to convert it into an improper fraction, right? Yes. So should we convert to an improper fraction yep. and multiply and flip all in one step? No. No. So simply convert to an improper fraction, convert to an improper fraction, then say to yourself, when dividing fractions, by all mine, flip the second and multiply. We then took 10 fourths and flipped it down here, and we took the division and made a multiplication down there, right? So one of your cheat sheet ideas, if you'll remember, was, see if I can find it, don't combine steps. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. And then the last problem we worked on was Bob's snake yeah. and Mary's snake, right? And we wanted to figure out um, how many of Mary's snakes fit inside of Bob's snakes, right? And if you were struggling with understanding what the division problem would be, I suggested you draw a picture. So here's Bob's snake. How big is Bob's snake, you guys? Thirteen and a half feet, right? How big was Mary's snake? Two and one fourth. So how many of these guys fit into Bob's snake? Six. Six, but we took thirteen and one half and we divided by two and one fourth. And remember, that second number is the number that goes into the first number, right? So technically, if I were going to use a division box, would it be thirteen and one half divided by four and one half? And how many of these go into that? You guys said that it was six. Any questions?